This story is called A Dance with Dragonflies, and here's how it goes. Rupert the Rabbit was far from his usual place, away from the meadow that was a round kind of space. Melvin the Mouse had come to him that morning, fretting with alarm, bringing with him a warning. Come with me, he'd said, his eyes full of worry. I need your help today. Melvin didn't wait for him to answer. He just ran quickly away. Rupert followed Melvin through the meadow and thick grove of trees, right through the heart of the tall cypress with their long, knobby knees. Hurry, he called. There's no time to waste. She'll drown if you don't really make haste. Rupert was taken by surprise that his friend could run so fast, but understood the problem when they stopped near a lake at last. There, right near the shore, was a duck with something covering her head. Rupert had never seen such a thing, but it filled his heart with dread. She couldn't see anything or even tell up from down. Melvin was right. Without his help, the duck might even drown. From time to time, he'd seen a duck or two once or twice before, when they'd flown over the forest, leaving their watery shores. But he'd never seen one close like this and didn't know what to do, for Rupert, Webfeet, and Sharp Duck Bills were something that were brand new. Hurry now, Melvin told him. Take that awful bag off of her head. I'm not tall enough, he explained, or I'd do it myself instead. Rupert hopped closer to the frightened duck, watching her thrash about. He could see Melvin was right. It was up to him to help her out. Hold still for a moment, Rupert said, talking loud so she could hear. She was thrashing about, squawking and crying as Rupert came near. I'll take that thing off your head, he told her, and you'll soon be all right. Then Rupert grabbed the thing with his teeth, pulling and holding on tight. That bag had an awful taste, nothing at all like grass or clover. He spat the thing out, glad that part of the rescue was now over. Thank you, quacked the duck, her big round eyes filled with relief and delight. She shivered, saying, that awful thing gave me a terrible fright. But what is it? asked Rupert as he sniffed at it laying on the ground. I've never seen anything like this before just laying around. I told you already, Melvin chimed in. Weren't you listening at all? It's called a bag, he said scowling, and it shouldn't be here. Not at all. A bag? Rupert asked with one eyebrow raised and a frown on his face. But what does it do and why is it here? Who put it in this place? This bag is made of plastic. It's something people use for many things. For them, it's very useful, but for us, disaster is all it brings. Oh, said the duck, there are a lot of these bag things laying all around, in the bushes, under the water, and just look, all over the ground. Rupert looked all around, both to his left and to his right. He was surprised and shocked to see such an ugly sight. I've told you, Malvin said. People are people. They're not like you and me. They bring things with them and then leave their garbage behind, as you can see. But Rupert had seen many people before there by his favorite tree. They came and they went without ever leaving any garbage he could see. They came from their homes to the forest out in the open air, where they could dance, drum, and celebrate without a single care. They often made fires and music and sometimes a lot of noise. But he'd come to enjoy the times he could see all the girls and boys. Not once had he seen a bag or other garbage left behind. The people he had met had always been welcoming and kind. Still, he could see what Melvin said was true with his very own eyes. The people who had left this big mess behind weren't very wise. There were bits and pieces of strange things as far as he could see. He wondered what all the things he saw in the water could be. Suddenly, he heard an odd noise, a humming, or a kind of buzzing sound. Hum, buzz, hum, buzz. Rupert! called Melvin. Don't be silly. You need to look up, not to look down. Rupert saw Melvin was right yet again, as he so often seemed to be. A swarm of dragonflies flying right towards him was really something to see. They made a bright cloud of color with bodies of green, purple, red, and blue. The air was humming, hum, with the sound of their wings. The ground beneath him was too, buzz, hum, buzz. <laughs> Daphne, Daphne, he heard several tiny voices shouting with alarm. Come quickly, and, oh, you must hurry, and, Shelley may soon come to harm. Rupert saw Melvin turn to the duck with worry in his eyes. Hurry now, Daphne, he told her. Make those web feet of yours fly. And you too, Rupert, Melvin told him as Daphne ran after her friends. Your help may be needed before this whole adventure comes to an end. Together the friends ran, away from the lake towards the trees. 
Rupert wondered what was wrong, and just who Shelley might be. The dragonflies led the way, weaving patterns of circles in the air, letting him know he was on the right track and that he was almost there. He didn't have very long to wait to find out Shelley was a squirrel, that she was fond of nuts and had a bushy tail, ending in a curl. The rest of her, from waist to head, Rupert couldn't see at all. She was stuck inside something that was silver, skinny, and tall. She's done it again, Melvin said. I don't believe it, but it's true. All right, Daphne, he told the duck. You know what we're going to do. Once again, Melvin told Rupert he too would have to help out. It was turning out to be a strange day without any doubt. The thing where Shelley was stuck, Melvin said, was something called a can. Inside where she couldn't reach was a bit of food left there by man. Hold on in there, Melvin called out, talking loudly to the squirrel. When I tell you to push, then do your best. You can do it, girl. Then Daphne sat down on the end of the can and nodded her head. All right, Melvin called out. Everyone do exactly what I said. Come on now, Rupert. Melvin turned to him. Help me pull her out. They pulled her tail. Shelley pushed real hard until they heard her shout. Ah! It's no use, Daphne said. This time the can is just too tight. We'll have to get more help or she'll have to stay here all night. No! They heard Shelley moan still stuck inside the can so deep. I can't stay here, she said. I'll never get to sleep. Rupert looked around to see there were acorns scattered all about. He wondered what he might be able to do to help his friend out. Oh, I have an idea, Melvin announced. Everyone gather around me. There's a people place over there, he said to the dragonflies. Do you all see? Yes, Rupert heard many voices agree. They could see it from the air. It was a place that had a table right through the trees, just over there. People, Rupert asked, taken completely by surprise. You told me being near people wasn't very wise. Why, yes, Daphne agreed. Many times you've told me the very same thing. And me, added a purple dragonfly. Think of the danger they bring. Shelley twitched her tail wildly as she dug into the dirt with her feet. People aren't like us, she said. They're not anyone we want to meet. But Rupert wasn't afraid of people. He'd seen them many times before. He'd often listened to their music, their stories, laughter, tears, and more. I have a plan, Melvin said. I think I know exactly what we need to do. To help Shelley, we need someone big to help us. That you can all see is true. Get their attention, Melvin suggested, especially the girls and the boys. Fly in circles close to them, Daphne agreed. Hum and buzz. Make lots of noise. That's a good idea, said Melvin, smiling. Then circle back here real quick. Maybe you should drop some acorns on them, Shelley said. That would do the trick. Rupert rolled his eyes and frowned. He didn't think that was very smart. If you wanted someone to help, he thought, you should ask from your heart. He was glad they left the acorns on the ground when they all flew away. But it was hard to wait, wondering who his winged friends would bring their way. It didn't take long to find out if their plan would work, not very long at all. Before he knew it, there they were, surrounded by people who seemed very tall. The dragonflies had brought with them several children, laughing and having fun. It seemed to take no time at all before Shelley was free, and they were done. He'd been afraid when he'd seen them coming running over the grassy hill, but like Melvin and Daphne, he had managed somehow to just sit still. The girls and boys who'd followed dragonflies had seen the problem right away, and though they'd been a little scared, they were gentle with Shelley and saved the day. Look over there, he heard one girl say. There's garbage laying on the ground. And not just over there, answered a boy. It's everywhere. Just look around. Rupert looked at Melvin and gave his good friend a happy wink. They could use this help if they knew how, if he could only think. That's when a dragonfly crashed into him because he was flying too low. I have it, Rupert cried. You can lead the children by flying to and fro. Good idea, agreed Melvin with a nod. Fly around and lead the way. Then hover over the garbage that needs to be picked up and thrown away. For the rest of the day, that's exactly what all of the new friends did. Rupert, Melvin, Daphne, Shelley, the dragonflies, and all of the kids. Rupert the rabbit lives near a tall tree in the forest and has many friends. He's curious, furry, brown, and helpful, and it seems his lessons never end. If he could reduce, reuse, and recycle himself, I bet he would. But that's something that you and I, as friends of Rupert, can do and should. 
So the next time you see a dragonfly, think of Rupert and look around. Perhaps you'll see something that needs to be picked up, just waiting to be found. Rupert and all of his friends thank you, and I do too, for helping keep the earth cleaned up, like I know you do. And that's the end.